So now the oldest, the oldest images that we have from antiquity and found on every continent is this image where 64 circles are overlapped and it's called the flower of life. And on every continent it was found in whatever language it was always called the flower of life. Mm -hmm. Well, 6,000 years ago or however long ago, someone had the clever idea of saying, you know what, why don't I draw straight lines where the circles overlap mm. and play it from that point yeah. So real quick, let me ask you. So this right here, what we're looking at is the flower of life, right? This is the original flower that's carved into so many different places throughout the world. It's always been respected. And there's 64 separate circles. And that's what these, the circles that we just saw being generated are literally how this image is created by simply drawing 64 circles in yep. this pattern. Yep. And I hope y'all are seeing how this is manifesting and how these symbols and this is like a, a a sand dollar almost. Now each one of these circles you have to see as a magnetic field. That's how magnetism behaves. Everything expands. But what they did six thousand years ago, keep it playing. Allow it to keep playing. Okay. Is they began to average the space where the circles overlap, so that tetrahedron mm -hmm. that we see because we know that there are no straight lines because all energy is a, all energy has an equal and opposite. Let's pause it for a second, just so I can repeat that. Um, all energy is expressed in motion, all motion expressed in waves and all waves occur. Therefore, it is impossible to create a straight line because every action has the equal and opposite reaction and the greater that reaction, the greater the resistance and the greater that curvature. This curvature is the, is the equanimity of all the interactions within a particular system. It all balances out into these, these perfect spheres which are magnetic fields around each other, which is a discharging aspect. And where these magnetic fields interact, this is where electricity begins. Where they overlap, they're forced to create spin. But 6,000 years ago, they said they're gonna average the spin and these toroidals happening and they generated straight lines mm. and approximated where the energy goes so you can keep playing it. And now you can clearly see that even the cube where we get Pythagorean theorem from, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, is an average. It's an approximation. Mm -hmm. But most of our math is our algebra, our calculus, all of those things are generated through this circumstance, which also led into why one times one you know, could not possibly equal one, because what if you made each side of those lengths one, then you couldn't get the proper hypotenuse. Mm. So all of these problems arose from them creating straight lines where there were no straight lines. And this has been called, you know, the, the greatest um, discovery basically in geometry and wow. for mathematics. But and that's we'll, the platonic solids you're speaking about. The solids, the platonic solids are averages. Euclid went to Egypt and pulled these things and wrote them down, and everyone took credit from them for them, but they took credit for some falsehoods. So they've watched it go through, and it'll go through the dodecahedron. So what I decided to do, what I was instructed to do, was to take the same flower. So can we go to my app? Yep. I I think they've seen this already anyway, so they understand. So if we'll go to my app. And that's the one where we can manipulate the this uh yep. That's okay. the, the the web application. It's in it's in my book, mm -hmm. tclc.com, going to page 134 on the right side of it, it'll say web application. Okay, but it's the one that uh the second one that, this one here, right? Yeah. Okay, let me move it. This right here, this is what they'll find. Tap on it and we can start playing with it. Okay, let's get this. So I'm it's very, it. yep, there we go. And what he has there, uh, there's an icon going from left to right is what happens when four bubbles meet. I took actually the, the actual curved triangular pieces. And I put four of them together based on universal ratios. And this is what it generated. We bring that closer yep. so everybody can see. 
and look at it from not just the top, but from um, maybe a 60 degree perspective, a little more, a little more and closer, just so they can see it. What you're looking at right here, if you'll rotate it, this is mm -hmm. the point where bubbles meet. This is the negative space that they cannot, they cannot compress. This is what we would call dark matter. This is, but this is the proton, the geometry of hydrogen itself. And we'll see that it, eight, it has eight poles, it has four contractive poles, and that's the, where it, it, where it where, um, concaves in, and it has electricity seeking a higher pressure condition will cause con a cavity. And magnetism, unable to maintain its electrical potential, ends up spinning off of the vortices. So real quick, brother, when you say four bubbles, you're literally saying that there's a sphere here in this space. Yeah. That, and this is just the negative space when four spheres are literally coming together. This is the space that's left in between them. Yes. Yes. Brilliant, 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 brilliant. You know, because I know people this, say bubbles. Four bubbles, this, what are you talking about? Uh-oh, sorry. Go ahead. Uh -oh. Yeah, you know, and that's Seeing, what people... Go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry, just real quick.